got to metal. Dear Mr. President, we thank you for all your efforts and the efforts of your administration on behalf of the Ukrainian Orthodox and Ukrainian Catholic <coughs> Churches, as well as Ukrainian Baptist and Pentecostal believers in Ukraine. We are especially grateful for the hope that you have instilled in the 50 million believers in Ukraine when you met with Ukrainian leaders in Spaso House and when you raised the issue of legalization of Ukrainian churches in Ukraine during your negotiations with Mr. Gorbachev at the last summit, as well as recently before the United Nations. We cannot overstate the importance of your efforts on behalf of human rights, national rights, and religious freedoms to the many nationalities in the Soviet Union who look to the West for guidance and strength. We can only hope that the next administration will follow your lead, Mr. President, and will be challenged to build upon the good work which you have begun. On behalf of our committee, and in commemoration of the Millennium of Christianity of Kiev and Rus, Ukraine, we would like to present to you a small token, a commemorative medallion of Saint Volodymyr, baptizer of Ukraine, and of the trident, the Ukrainian national emblem. Please also accept our committee's book, A Thousand Years of Christianity in Ukraine. Making this presentation, Mr. President, are his beatitude, Metropolitan Stislaw, head of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church in the United States, by the way, who's 92 years old, Metropolitan Stephen Sulik, head of the Ukrainian Catholics in the United States, and Reverend Oleksa Harbozyuk, President of the All-Ukrainian Evangelical Baptist Fellowship. Thank you, Mr. President, and God bless you. Well, thank you very much. I am aware that the, sen the millennium that is being observed in the Soviet Union actually took place a thousand years ago in the Ukraine, and that was the first Christianity to come to the to the continent there. And uh, yes, we have continued to work that a fundamental part of human rights must be, have to do with the, with religion and the freedom of religion. And we will continue to strive for this as we did in the recent summit and as we have before, that the very basis must be the freedom of people to, to practice their religion openly. I know that today in the Ukraine, where it began a thousand years ago, there are upwards of 50 million people who have to worship secretly because they don't dare, uh, not allowed to come out in the open with it. But we'll continue, and I have to believe that before there's another millennium, way before, <laughs> before there's going to, there has to be a change. And that is the most basic of freedoms. And you've honored me greatly, and I'll try to be deserving of it. 
Thank you very much. sign into law today a major reform of our nation's welfare system, the Family Support Act. This bill, H.R. 1720, for real welfare reform. Reform that will lead to lasting emancipation from welfare dependency. It is fitting that the word family figures prominently in the title of this legislation. In so doing, it is really for your life and for the lives of the children you bring into this world. Well, the Family Support Act focuses on the two primary areas in which individuals must assume this responsibility. First, the legislation improves our system for securing support from absent parents. Second, it creates a new emphasis on the importance of work need for a family's breadwinner to maintain the habits, skills, and pride achieved through work. This work requirement also allows us to expand coverage in a welfare family, participate in meaningful work while still getting a needed cash support. Single parent families also share in the message of hope underlying this bill. They too will know that there is complete the basic education so necessary to a productive life. Other parents will be offered a broad range of education, employment and training activities designed to lead to work. To provide new employment opportunities to welfare recipients, states will be entitled to receive $6.8 billion over the next seven years. They also will receive the funding necessary to provide child care and Medicaid benefits, and nevertheless meet their responsibilities to them. To improve the adequacy of child support awards, judges and other officials will be required to apply support guidelines developed by their states for setting award amounts, and to help ensure that the child support awarded. Reflecting the concern we all share over the federal budget deficit, the Family Support Act contains funding provisions to offset the increased new spending in the bill. The single largest source of the funding comes from a temporary extension of current authority for the Treasury to collect overdue debts owed the federal government by reducing federal tax refunds of individuals not paying those debts on time. In 19 as clear today as it was then, and the successes of many fine state programs like that one have made this landmark legislation possible. As lead governors on welfare reform for the National Governors Association, Governors Castle and Clinton consistently presented the interests of the states in getting welfare reform enacted. And that interest has been manifested by many states carrying out their own welfare reform programs. Leaders in this effort credit for the responsible welfare to work and child support enforcement reforms in the Family Support Act. In particular, Senators Moynihan, Armstrong, Dole, and Packwood, and Benson, and Representatives Rostenkowski, Hank Brown, Michael, Frenzel, and Downey played key roles in forging the consensus for this landmark legislation. They and the members of the administration who worked so diligently on this bill will be remembered for accomplishing what many have attempted, 
but no one has achieved in several decades, a meaningful redirection of our welfare system. And I think it is time now for me to sign the bill, and I thank all... Without it, <laughs> but uh, we don't have to try. It's what are these, there. What are these things prove? Are they? They're not really the are they? They could be, and I'm hoping that tonight's will be, because I think there are very great differences between the two candidates. What? Kind of pointers, Steve. You can't quail, so badly when you gave him so many great pointers. busy. Jeffrey drew your picture today, but we forgot it, so Ken will bring it into you tomorrow. <laughs> well, did he, he do did. that? Why, After school today, he drew How should we do this? Here. Come on, Jeff. Back here well, in front of us. You want me to pick you up? Oh, oh it's hiding. <laughs> Go over here now. Jeffrey, look right here. Great. We've got that? the one in front of the desk here, too, with the flags. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Is President Reagan's desk? Just move a little more into the middle there. How's that, Jeff? All right, Jeff. Yeah, look over here. Look right here, Jeffrey. That's... Big smile, Jeffrey. <laughs> Great, thank you. That's thank wonderful. you. wonderful. What do you say? You don't have to look at the picture anymore, at the camera. Come here. <laughs> you being shy? Right. Thank you very much. Right, Want pictures with the boys. Oh, pleasure. How's that? Okay, you going to say thank, thank you? you? <laughs> Thank you Thank very, you very much. much. My pleasure. Okay. Say bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Say bye bye. You did. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All. all right. Bye. Say bye. Bye, bye Jeffrey. Wave bye. Bye. You <laughs> just couldn't see those cameras. <laughs> Please wave. Say bye again. There we go. Bye. <laughs> now. You want singles or? Well, yeah, well, Paul, why don't you wait a second here? Let okay. mom get an individual. All right. All right. President. Well, should I just yeah, that's fine. Right. Oh, look at the, don't look at me. Don't look at you. Not like you. Great. Thank you. All right, mom, why don't you come over here? Okay. 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 Mom, why don't you get in the middle? Get in the middle? Yeah. Well, well, yeah, that's right. I'll get in the middle. Hi. Let's do that first and then I'll show them. Great. I forgot I'm a member of this family. Well, you should be on the other side there. He's a member. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We'll frame him in. One of the important members, that's for sure. Smile. Okay, yes. all right. Yes. I don't like doing this. <laughs> He's happy his picture taken. I hope you don't, do you? What? You don't mind having your picture taken, though, do you? No, no, I got over that. <laughs> <laughs> Paulette said she saw one of your movies the other oh, night. Oh, movie, um, Santa Fe Trail. Oh, they were running that on TV three weeks yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. oh, that seems know? to be a very popular one. I talked to more people what year that have seen that, that movie. It runs a lot. Oh, golly. Now, wait a minute. When was that? When was that made? I'm trying to 
think of something I can tie it to. We've got the book in here. <laughs> <laughs> he can look it up and tell you. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, some of those old movies are a lot better than the new movies that they make. Maybe it's just me. Oh, well, oh, I think they're better. Oh, definitely, definitely. Every once in a while up at Camp David, we run movies on the weekends, and we're up there, and yes. the gang comes in to see them, and uh, every once in a while we run in what I call a golden oldie. Golden oldie. And I think they've become fans of them. I'm too. sure, I'm sure. Yes. My boyfriend, he just loves westerns, and every type of movie. Yeah. Well, Santa Fe Trail, I got a good lesson about Hollywood. That was kind of early in my mm -hmm. career, you know. In, the, in that picture, the, uh, well, you know, I think that followed uh, the play in The Gipper. And uh, all of a sudden, I was told to be into the studio uh, for wardrobe fittings that I was going to be in the picture with Errol Flynn doing mm -hmm. Santa Fe Trail. Well, when I got in there, I knew what fittings were, the wardrobe department. You go over there, and they've got a dressing room. They come in. There was a whole row of uniforms all hanging up there on a rack. And uh, they were the uniforms of the same era. That mm -hmm. These were all finished. And I went over and looked at the tag on the sleeve of them. They were all uniforms for Dennis Morgan, who was playing Custer in Santa Fe Trail. Oh. And then in came the fellows, the wardrobe men had been working all night after the preview of the Rockney picture with the half done clothes to be fitted <laughs> on me. And they grabbed their arms around these other clothes and just dumped them on the floor. <laughs> and then began hanging mine up. And I looked and I looked down there <laughs> at Dennis Morgan. And I said, I got to remember this. I could be the one being dumped on yeah, the floor right. someday. <laughs> yeah. Well, that speaks to your mind. Yeah, but he was all cast and gonna, we were both under contract for the oh. studio. See, you have a lot of practice for this job, haven't you? Uh, yes, I'll tell you something. I've only told a few people, and that is that, you know, there was a big fuss raised about what is an actor doing running for... Oh, yes, I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. that. Since I've been here, I've wondered many times how the devil you could do it if you hadn't. That's just what I said. <laughs> yes, yes. You have to be a one. Well, thank you very much. Yes, well, thank you. Yes, right. if you found me last time, I get to meet you. Well... <laughs> This would have had to be about 40 or 41, I think, for that picture. Okay. We'll look it up That's on here. That's lower than I am. Well, I'm glad I got to finally meet you, Mr. President. Well, nice to meet you. Beautiful day. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Bye, Yes. Bye. Okay. Mr. President, this is Richard Davis, who's the president of the Congress. Hello. It's a, my pleasure. Yeah. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you, sir. Paul Cyberlake, the Hello. National Executive Vice President. president. Daniel Gretemann, National Vice President. Pleasure to meet you. And John Flack, Hi. National Hi. Secretary of Treasury. This Thank is you. also Hi. Dick Sewell, who's with hey. the Board of Power. How are you? Yes. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. County Mac's going to win in Florida. Yay. <laughs> with your I'm happy you, to be here. You did it. <laughs> oh. Okay. Mr. President, I have appreciation for your Board of Independent Labor and your friendship. We uh, give you this plaque and also uh, it is a honorary lifetime membership in our organization and again we are proud to have the opportunity to meet with you today and offer this to you on our behalf. Well thank you very much. I'm very proud to have this having been the president of my own union for several years or so not there. But I appreciate this very much, and I know, I know how you've been growing, and I know also how much support you've given to not only the things we're doing, but to me as a candidate, and that you've also s are supporting George Bush. And yes, sir. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. You're an honor, George Bush. And I know how hard you're working to make us more competitive in the world, and all of that. So I'm very, very proud to join you. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you it's, it's our pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah. Had a wonderful thank you, Mr. Mr. President. Thank you. Had a wonderful eight years. Well, thank you. Thanks very oh, much. Mr. President, thank you very much. Thank you. How are you? Let me introduce oh. Dr. Rosenstein, who's 
Brother. Very glad to see you. It's a big honor to me. Well, and I'm very thankful to you for everything that was done for my family. A name for my wife and the whole family, my children, great children, as a leader of the free world and as a person. Well, I know what these two senators have done with regard to um, Very special thanks. You, you know, Rabbi Boston, Mr. President. How are you, Mr. Yeah. President, today? Good Thank morning, you. Senator. Good afternoon. Thank you for letting us come. Well, I am I know what they have done, and I say yes, I am. Knowing of their work, I brought it up in my own meetings with, the, with them, and so pleased that you finally have been allowed to Choose the place where you will live. I think religious freedom is one of the most important freedoms in the world. And we keep trying to press this idea on the Soviets that it must come. Thank you very much. And you see, I know that in your life you had many fruits of your world. And it's one of maybe small, but very important fruits. Yes. You have many big fruits. It's Dr. Small. Rosenstein tried for 15 years to go out with your success, Mr. Yeah, President. Yeah. Well, the two senators, yes. of course, brought forth, but it was your leaving him there. And, yes. and uh, if it's possible, I ask you to let your door open for Rabbi Bokum, because he was very instrumental. Oh. <laughs> All <our> things. <laughs> it's yeah. very important. So we can... Thank God we do have an open door. Do you want to like a group picture of this? That would be nice, yes. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Why don't you for yes, the for middle, especially. <laughs> Give Mrs. Rosenstein and myself my best, very best regards and very much. I welcome it. You see, it was a, a rule in Torah that we cannot interrupt the studies of our children, even for such important things. And he must, uh, he, he was, uh, he left because of his beginning of his studies in Yeshiva. Uh, so sorry. You know, I just one on one with General Secretary Gorbachev this, knowing the numbers and all, and I tried to, I said, look, I'm not going to negotiate something on this. I said, I'm just going to make a suggestion, whatever it may mean. And I said, has it ever occurred to you that if those people were allowed to worship as they chose, they might not uh, feel the need to emigrate. They might, they're Russians, they, they might, might stay. And uh, I don't know whether he, <laughs> Good point. point or not, but I, I made that point. I even used our own country. I said, look, this country was began on the idea of some people who weren't allowed to worship the way they wanted to. Yes. So I hope maybe he's thinking about it. <laughs> when uh, Dr. Rosenstein arrived in America, his first thought that he conveyed to me, Mr. President, was a concept that is stated in the Talmud that the the increase of religion worldwide is an important ingredient and a very underscoring um, basic tenant in promoting peace even. Yes. Because when human beings will appreciate human life and that they realize there's someone above them that they are accountable to and we're not just doing as we please, when we please, that is a tremendous promotion of peace. Equally, I mean, we need the arsenals as a deterrent, certainly, but this is the power of prayer certainly has its place to yes. In the course of your presidency, you bring so many joy to people, to disparate people in Russia. I'm thankful to you from all my folk. You see, it's very, very special. On behalf of all of us, people. Well, well, <laughs> thank you, sir. Glad to see you. Thank you very much. You see, and one miracle happened, you see. It was written in our books that no, no, nothing in the world is done by occasion, only by the will of our creator. It's, it's your picture with your historical oh. speech and the uh, arm covering the memorial. And uh, it's very impressive, very impressive. And in the same, in the same, uh, uh, excuse me for one moment. Very pleased. Yeah, I will. Oh, you see, it's a special meeting, and I am speaking in it, you see. And it was the last, the last newspaper, you see. A newspaper is uh, it's the biggest, huge newspaper in the world. Can I give it to you? You certainly can. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. And I'm very thankful to Senators who have supported in my behalf. George did well, didn't he? Thank you. Yeah, he really did. Well, again, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Bye-bye.